Mm, instantaneous. Well, we already know what average is. We just have it on the board over here. We have that. That's average velocity. The question is, if h is time, Not Tim. H is not Tim. H is time. My bad. If H is time, and we want to talk about instantaneous velocity, how much time elapses in an instant? question, isn't it? How much time elapses in an instant? Because when you think about it, is it zero? No, very, very close. If it was zero, that'd be awesome. If we could all live forever. Because time would not exist. Right? Because if it was zero, you'd add zero plus zero plus zero. Every instant would have a value of zero to it, right? We would never age. We would just be stuck in the same time. That might be boring for you to be stuck in this class for eternity. It'd be awesome for me. I love this class. Uh, except for you. <laughs> But yeah, the, an instant can't possibly be zero, but it can't be anything greater than what, greater so we can put our finger on it. We can't say it's point zero 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 one tenth of a second or whatever you want to say. You can't say it's point zero 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 one seconds because that would be finite, right? And you could say then, well, between one and, and the next, you can delineate that. But instants can be smaller than that. Is there time between point zero zero one seconds and point zero 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 one seconds? Yes, there's time between that. So we, no matter how small you make that instant, there's something smaller. Or there's something less, less small, less, quicker, even quicker. So from here to here, and then quicker than that, quicker than that. So we can't let it equal zero. An instant isn't zero. But can we let it approach zero? So the idea behind instantaneous velocity is the exact same idea behind uh, the slope of curve at a point. Because if we have this, which is our slope, and this gave us a slope at a specific point, this gives us average velocity, and if I let my h go to zero, it will give me instantaneous velocity. And that's the same thing. So what you know now is that the slope of a curve is instantaneous velocity. That should make sense. If you have a position curve and you find out how fast it's going up at a certain point, wouldn't that give you velocity? Average would be between two points. Instantaneous is at a single point. That's a, the same idea as the slope between two points and the slope at a single point. So instantaneous velocity does the same thing we did with the slope of a curve. It says here's the average. How do we make it instant? I know that this was the average velocity. This was a slope between two points. What do I want to have happen to the h if I'm talking about an instant? Where's it going? And what's the only thing that will allow me to let h approach zero? Limit. So I'm going to take a limit. That is instantaneous velocity. <coughs> Which hand you understand that? See the connection between it. It's kind of cool, right? It's the same thing. Uh, the slope of a curve at a point is instantaneous velocity. The slope is average velocity if you're talking about a position curve. You want to see an example? Yes. I thought you would. I hope so, at least. Because I have some ready for you. Your position curve is s of t equals 500 minus 16t squared 
Uh, that approximates some gravity curve, probably, because of the negative 16 t squared. That's about how you approximate that. Uh, dropping from maybe a 500 foot cliff or something. I don't know. Find the instantaneous velocity after five seconds. So how fast is this thing falling at exactly five seconds? I don't want average. I don't want from zero to five. I don't care about that. What if I know this is going to this is maybe a relationship. What if I know this is going to impact something at five seconds? What I'm going to want to know if I want to protect a windshield or something, I don't know, protect some sort of glass. I want to know how how fast that's going so I can say, is that glass going to hold up or not? Right? Average isn't going to give it to me. Instantaneous would. So how fast is it going at the moment of impact? When's that get, how fast is that going? Then you could derive how much force that is and how much uh, you, you're going to have to hold up under a certain load or whatever, whatever that case may be from physics. But here, right here, this is pretty important for us to be able to find the instant velocity of an object at any given time that I say. The given time I say is 5. Now you can see a connection between what we just did and what we're going to do now because it is the same exact idea. What we want to know is instantaneous velocity. And what I've given you is that's the limit as h approaches 0, s in this case, t sub 0 plus h minus s of t sub 0 all over h. What is your t sub 0? What's the time at which you want to find the velocity? Five. So you know that t sub 0 is 5 seconds. Okay. There is no starting and ending time, folks. You're starting at 5 and you're stopping at 5. Well, stopping a little teeny bit past 5. But it's so close you can't tell the difference. So there is no two times. There's no average. There is only one. There can be only one Highlander. So it's just like that. Um, anyway, so t sub 0 is 5. Can you do what we did before? Can you find s of 5, s of 5 plus h? Do you see where the s of 5 and the s of 5 plus h are coming from? That's what we want up here. We actually just did those examples just a little while ago. Now, another question is this. Could I have asked it a different way? Could I have asked it, hey, find me the instantaneous velocity at any time? I hope you're, hope you're with me on this. If I asked it, find the instantaneous velocity at any time, would you have a 5 here? No. Would you have a 5 there? You would just leave it as t, and then you'd come up with a formula, and you could plug in any time that you want. How many would feel okay with that, that idea? So that was the two connections that we had, we had to make. So let's go ahead, let's plug this in. Uh, what is s of 5 plus h? Can you tell me? S of 5 plus h. That says go to the s, s position curve and plug in 5 plus h. Don't all talk at once. 500, great. Okay, 500. And Sarah, you said minus. Minus what? 16. 16. 5 plus h. 5 plus h. 5 plus h, Five plus h is non-separable. It has to be there. 5 plus h. And then what? Well, let's look at it. Are you okay getting from here to here? You see where it's coming from? This is just... The position curve at 5 plus h is a composition. Take this, put it there. How much is s of 5? s of 5 says take 5, plug it into your function, what do you get? 500 minus 16. 500 minus? 16 times 5 squared. Sure, so 500 minus 16 times 25. I have no idea what that is. Help, help me out with that. <coughs> Yeah, I'll have calculators. Go quick. How much? One hundred. I'll believe you. Okay, I kind of had some drop off in participation. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know how to find the one hundred? Is it one hundred? Do you know how to find the one hundred? Do you know how to find the five hundred minus sixteen five plus h squared? You see where that's coming from? You sure? We're taking this. We're substituting it into our function. That's 5 plus h. That's our t sub 0 plus h. That's giving us this expression. If we're to substitute these two things, well, then we've got h. We have 500 minus 16, 5 plus h squared. 
minus 100. Better? We'll continue this next time. We'll find out exactly how much instantaneous velocity is. Put that out. <laughs> what a good afternoon. How are you guys doing? Very good. All right. Uh, we're going to continue talking about this problem. Now, what we're doing is we're trying to find not the average velocity of something, which is, we found out last time, simply the slope between two points. We don't want to find the average, displacement over time. We want to now find the instantaneous velocity. So, how fast is an object going, moving, at a specific point in time, an instant, like at that one moment? It could change before, it could change after, but right then, not an average, but an instant. Like, uh, I think I gave this example. If you're driving down to, to LA, if you go from here to LA, let's say it's about 300 miles, right? If you make it in five hours, how fast were you going? 60. See, a lot of you are saying 60 right now, right? Because you're doing 300 miles divided by five hours would give you 60 miles per hour, true? That would be your, your computation in your head. However, what you just did was an average velocity, an average speed, as a matter of fact velocity if you want to consider the, the direction. But that's an average, right? The overall distance divided by the overall time gives you how fast you're going on average. Now realistically, are you going to be driving exactly 60 miles an hour from Merced to LA? No. No, not if you've ever been to LA. Because uh -uh. when you get to LA, you're going like 20 miles an hour. When you're afraid, you're like 80, boom, when you're, you're going, right? You're not always going 60, you're going faster, slower, you hit the brakes, a semi truck pulls in front of you, you flip them off, you go fast, you know, that's just the way it works. So we're not talking about the average velocity here, we want to know what was your exact speed the moment you crossed the Bakersfield city limit? That's the question we're asking now. What was your exact speed the moment you left Merced? You looked at, okay, I was going 63. Maybe I hit Bakersfield, I'm doing 90, you know? It, it doesn't have to be 60 all the time. It could be an instant speed. That's what the idea is. What we found out is that in order to find the instantaneous velocity, we came up with a formula that was actually the slope of a curve at a point. That's the same exact thing. The slope of a curve at a point is the velocity of a certain point of that curve. So for us it was... Did it involve a limit or not? Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. The reason why it involves a limit is because the H that we're about to put on the board represents your time. And in an instant of time, how much time passes? Well, very little. And that's what we say H is going to zero. Because very little time is passing. A little is passing, but it's not quantifiable. And that's what H approaches zero actually says. So we go, okay, well, we know it's a limit as our time, our H, the distance between t sub zero and t sub one, the, dif the difference in that is going to zero. Position after you end minus the position when you start gives you your displacement over h, which is your distance, or sorry, your difference in the times, how much time has elapsed. We're letting h go to zero because we're now taking an instant of time. What we need to be good at is taking this information, plugging it into this limit, and then using what we know about limits to solve the problem. Let's see if we can do this together. Are you ready for it? So there's two options that you can you have when computing these instantaneous velocities option number 1 is